Morning all. Guy Hudson here, electromagnetic surveyor from Beneficial Environments. So uh, welcome to my talk, um, our discussion this morning, uh, principally about shielding. So shielding, basically there's two forms of it. One is close to you through clothing or bedding, and the other is through um, redecoration or refurbishment of uh, premises, um, typically, most importantly, uh, bedrooms. So if we deal with clothing first, um, you need, um, uh, certainly for winter, a long sleeved hoodie. Um, and I wear one um, in the winter, night and day, um, a different one for night and day. Uh, so I've got pajama one and a daytime one. And there are different weights of those you can get. You can get a summer weight one. And um, I've got a thin winter weight one and I've got a thick winter, winter weight one. Um, they're really effective. And um, when you're sleeping, I sleep in a sleeping bag made of the material that we make our modem, our modem bags out of, which is basically a cotton, uh, which is, is um, suitable to, to sleep in and is 20% um, very, very fine uh, stainless steel um, thread or filament uh, woven in, into the fabric. And um, it's thoroughly tested uh, and the, the specification for it's available on our website and shows the, uh, the shielding factor um for the different microwave frequencies now um it the firm that make them my shield has got got their own testing laboratories so they um as they develop their their materials they they rigorously test them and they're very effective so i sleep in a sleeping bag made of this we we make up uh, you can order whatever size you want from uh, our website. Um, the sleeping bags, they make them generous. Um, otherwise, you can get caught up in them and they're a bit tight. Make them, or order a good generous size for you. Um, what I've found over, over the years is that if I wear, um, the, the, there is a, a, a head pocket at the top of the, of the uh, sleeping bag, um, which is quite effective. Um, particularly if I'm, if I'm in a electrosensitive episode, I can put that over my head, but it is slightly claustrophobic. And what I'd prefer um, is to be completely free of the top half of me out of the sleeping bag and you can just thrash around and move in your sleep and still be protected with a long sleeve hoodie on. And um, that's very comfortable and also reduces your exposure at night. Um, particularly to um, phone mast radiation. Phone mast radiation, then um, you can shield in, in your, I've done belt and braces, so I've, I've shielded the walls of my bedroom and I shield myself in bed, um, sort of because I can. And anyway, so later we'll talk about how to do uh, walls and things. But anyway, the, the alternative and a very popular one, and which is what I recommend to my customers who want the minimum uh, disruption to their lives. Um, so, um, so that um, partners don't even need to know that they're shielded um, is a thing called the three, the three sheet system. It's on the website and basically um, keeping your your face open so yes it's subject to radiation but there's no claustrophobia there's no noticeable change anything to interrupt with your sleep um, so I we'll have a bed sheet made of made of this good old stuff um, inside the duvet cover um, just so that there's one layer of, of cotton sheet and this and also you have as a mattress topper, another one. And then at the back of the bed, behind the bed head is another sheet. And that 
I worked out the copes with 93% of directions that the radiation can come in through. The radiation, um, microwave radiation, the problem one, is um, it, it forms shadows like light. So it, 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 it's very directional. And so that you can shield in different directions and you really will be shielded from it just like you would ordinary daylight. Um, and the three sheet systems gives you 90, 93% um, uh, shielding. So, okay, so they'll leave 7%. Um, and um, compared to what is theoretically achievable with shielding um, is, uh, is still allowing a lot in, but I find it is very good. And the great thing about it is I can, I can stick the sleeping bag and the, the, the hoodie into a suitcase. And so wherever I'm going, um, I haven't got to ask the hotel or friends or whatever to um, uh, switch, switch the Wi-Fi off, which always causes problems because particularly at friends, they'll have younger, younger relatives staying or, or whatever, and they will not want the Wi-Fi shut off. And it, and it just avoids all those nasty antisocial battles. Um, and pe people thinking you're oh, one of those weird electrosensitive types, or more likely they've never even heard of electrosensitivity. So it just stops all of that, that stuff. Right, so that's um, bed sheets and clothing. Although clothing, there's lots of variations. You need during the day to have as much of your body covered as possible. So a long sleeve hoodie and leggings, a long leggings are ideal. Although in the summer months, I just make do with a T-shirt work I've got here, which is made of uh, other other material um, and and uh, and shorter shorter leggings. So it's actually middle wear. So you wear it over underwear and under your outdoor clothes. Um, and it's washing that it gives limits the life of of the, the of the material so always wash it as cold as you can and with the mildest detergent as you can i i use sonnet um silk for silk or eco for wool um detergents at 20 degrees and that seems to give good life for my my all my things have survived so far Right, so that's clothing, and it's important. So there's an important thing about it. Everyone thinks, so the, one of the most common headaches after most, most common um, symptoms is headaches after tinnitus. And you'd think, oh, well, I'll protect, protect my head. And I thought so. So I was gonna wear a hood, although, you know, so a lot of my work's in London. It means catching the train full of, mobile phones and um, and laptops and Wi-Fi on the train. And I used to get home from a day in London after I had two train rides in a state. I used to have a terrible headache um, coming back. But since I've been wearing um, the clothing, um, uh, at least um, shorts and T-shirt, um, Oh, just a message come up about earthing. Uh, yes, I'll come on to that in a minute and why they need to be earthed as well. See, then, um, anyway. Um, so, and I thought, you know, of even thinking about wearing a, a, a beekeeper's hat, which is a hat with a veil over your face, and it looks weird. And um, uh, I didn't really want to do that. And... Um, so I thought I'd just try, I'd, I'd just try covering my trunk or my arms and legs as well. And just covering your trunk really, really helps a lot. And so it probably means that, or the inference I take from it is the radiation from Wi-Fi and and other and and all of the the from from the train itself and from laptops and phones. Yeah, and also phone radiation actually affects your blood and it's the affected blood, the irradiated blood when it hits your head causes the headache. 
because I, I I don't get that I don't get anywhere near so many headaches or such bad symptoms hardly any symptoms at all these days now that I'm wearing these things anyway so clothing really works and I can imagine that if you are sensitive to the metals that are in stainless steel then you could react to it but i'm not and if and and nor are most people and it's it, the clothing really really works for many many people silver isn't rather than stainless steel silver is an option it's not so washing durable and it's far more expensive um, and you can keep the, the things that I've had with stainless steel in really, really last. So my sleeping bag is I, I dread to think how old it is and how many times it's been washed many, many, many times. And it still works. They're still easy to test. You just stick um, an Acousticon 2 or a Classic 2 um, a meter in there and you, you can see through the material what, what level it, what level it, how much it's dropped. And they, and they really, really do um, reduce the uh, radiation hitting your body by quite a large factor, typically by a factor of about 100. And um, so theoretically, so shielding factors then, now we're into, and oh, okay, let, let's deal with, 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 uh, with earthing first. If you want to shield high frequency, in other words, microwaves, you don't need to earth. If you want to shield lower frequencies, um, but um, the um, electric field, all you can shield with these materials are the electric field. They do not affect the magnetic field one, one iota. So it is the electric field that, that, is, that is reduced. And if you earth, when we've got, we sell off our website, a very simple earthing system where it's what's used by the electronics industry called to prevent what's called ESD, electrostatic discharge. So if you're, if you're in a chip factory and you accidentally touch a chip and you've got any charge on your body at all, it blows the chip and you might as well not have the factory because none of your chips are going to work. So there's a lot of effort put into earthing people on the production line. So the floor is conductive and completely earthed and you wear um, straps on your shoes that connect your skin to the floor so that your hands, as, you, as your hands are on the production line, are completely earthed. And there's no danger of you, you wrecking the production, what the whole reason for the whole factory. So. What that means is that this, as, as everyday safety equipment, is um, good value for money. It's high production, um, and it means the the connections, the wires, and the clips, and all those, and the plugs, and all that kind of things are nice and cheap. Um, and so, also as an extra safety thing, where you're earthing, there's a great big resistor in the connection to the the wall socket. Um, and it's 100,000 ohms, which is a very large resistor. So comforting for us selling the equipment is that even if you've got a sort of kamikaze electrician and you've got completely messed up wiring so that, you know, it's somehow or other, goodness knows how it would happen, but the earth got connected to the live, you still wouldn't get a shock from it because of that big resistor in it. Now, um, so... What you do is you use a crocodile clip, just a basic, simple crocodile clip connected to what's called a banana plug. And, um, and that then is connected by, by a wire to a yellow plug, which uh, is then recognized as an ESD plug, which has got the 100,000 ohm resistor in it. Now that slightly reduces the effect of the um, earthing, but you do you do get that extra um, safety. So that's that's what when all all and so on the three sheet system, all three need to be connected to earth, and we provide a, a plug for that. Um, and then that provides a um, a saving a, a, a shielding against the 
uh, electric fields coming out of your wiring or your bedside lamp or whatever around around you so you do get a lot of extra connection and protection there is an important thing so um when you when you tap your phone um to make a payment um the system that connects the two are called is called NFC, and in one of the things that you must connect disconnect on your settings on your phone, disconnect NFC, and I think in Apple world that is called Air Bridge. So, um, so disconnect NFC, and it's called near field connection because when you've got an aerial. Um, which is distributing radio waves. The first few wavelengths, two or three, this, the, the waves are sorting themselves out. And once they've sorted themselves out, they, the electric field and the magnetic field are locked in together. And so, and if you stop the electric field, you stop the magnetic field. But when you're further in and you're shielding, which is what it does, only shields the electric field, the magnetic field can still get through. And it depends on the design of the, uh, the actual um, transmitter and the antenna, the way the aerial works as to what, what a component, how, what component of the, this, what the relative strength of the magnetic to the electric field are. But what it means is if you're less than a couple of wavelengths near the transmitter, and in the case of these microwaves, it's a, a few feet typically, um, then the magnetic field still gets through. And so the, the shielding, when you're really close to whatever it is, isn't that isn't absolute isn't isn't a hundred percent and interestingly the um the design of these um sh shielding uh, tests the standard setup is that you've got you've got in a in a, a chamber which doesn't echo at all so any signals going out to the walls of the chamber don't go bounce back it's called an anechoic chamber um, and they've famously been used for years for testing noise coming out of machinery so that it doesn't reflect back. Um, but you can do the same for microwaves and have an anechoic chamber for, for microwaves. So the testing cell is an anechoic chamber and you have a square meter of the material in the middle. And on one side, you've got a transmitter and the other side, you've got a receiver. And what you do is you, is you test the relative strengths of the transmitter to the receiver there's the strengths of the radiation transmitted compared to what's received the other side but it's all in the far field that these at these microwave frequencies is in the far field so the the specification quoted like on this is far far more than normal practicability Give you an example. I had this last week at a at a survey I did where there was a smart meter, and the smart meter was far too close to where the client um, lived and worked, and was affected by it. And so, the obvious question is, well, why do you just shield it then? Well, you can't. You too need unless you put it in a box, which is. Um, two or three times the wavelength away from the meter so you need a fairly big box and you could put your shielding material on the outside of the inside of this box and it would work but you can't it's not practical and so it i'm afraid it it doesn't work 100 percent. it reduces it a lot but not massive amounts so if i put the this is a modem bag um so if if you if you put your Put your modem inside inside that, and you 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 pull these drawstrings tight around the wires. Then um, it should provide a good seal. But in fact, it only reduces it to a lower amount. So say ten percent leaks out, 
um, it's useful. So it, um, it, it does reduce it and it takes it below the threshold of a lot of people that's going to affect a lot of a lot of electrosensitives. And also, um, as, as I said last week, um, it's very important on your modems that you get the Wi-Fi switched off. But when sometimes you can't, for some models and modems, the, the, the utilities could switch it off, but they're very, very reluctant to do it and it takes ages. So a modem bag will, will cut down that radiation. But it, what it will do, it will make the Wi-Fi pretty useless in most of the house. But in the room where the, where the bag is or the, where the modem is, uh, it's enough to, for people to use their phones and computers and things, usually. And um, so, but the rest of the house is, is severely reduced. So providing your modems well away or routers well away from where you, um, where you, where you live, where you exist, where you work, where you eat, where you sleep, um, then it has a major effect. And also, so the utilities that are running these things are usually, um, in order to stop them being hacked, have to up upgrade the software every so often. And when they do, often the settings change and back to default, and the default is Wi-Fi on. So sometimes, quite mysteriously, modems will just start transmitting again. It's why it's important to have your own your own meter, uh, your own um, handheld EMF EMF meter. So um, that should be the first thing on the shopping list of of any elect electrosensitive. And our um, recommendation is for the Canadian Classic Two, little tiny little thing, which is very portable. And so we've got the shielding now. So shielding, um, the shielding, the practical everyday shielding you're able to achieve is significantly less than what you read on the adverts for the materials and the paints and all that kind of stuff. They don't work as well as that because the lab tests are not truly representative of the real everyday situation because of the near field effect. And so in answer to that last question that came up on the discussion, thank you. Um, yes, you do need to earth the um, bed sheet, the, the bed sheets and, and, and all of that. So, um, yeah. Now, so other kind of shielding, we come on to the serious stuff. Um, so to do with redecorating and creating your environment out of the structure of your house. So at very minimum, it means redecorating um, and, um, and ideally all six sides of your room. So your floor. So if you've got a wooden floor, um, good idea to take it up. If it's carpeting is, is the easiest, you take the carpet up and put the shielding underneath the carpet on top of the floor. And um, it can be a gauze. Um, and um, I've got one here. This is a, a copper gauze, um, which is very, very effective. It's got very, very strong uh, shielding. They, and that end is very durable. So it's particularly good for underfloors. What can happen is if you've got carpets, um, the, 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 it, it can wear. But if you want a cheaper, cheaper solution, uh, you go for two layers of wallpaper, either under the floor, so we've got this, which is um, we've got specially made in uh, in Switzerland, which is paper backed aluminium, um, and it's got lots of little holes in it, um, and um, the holes are to let water vapor through. So it's not a vapor barrier, and architects will tell you how important vapor barriers are. Um, either you want them to stop damp coming in or moisture coming in um, because you can easily buy all well, the cheapest shielding you can get is plasterboard with a sheet of aluminium on 
Um, but it has to be carefully designed because because of the lack of moisture movement, it means you can get condensation. And as soon as you get conversation, condensation, you get mold. And many, many um, electrosensitives are sensitive to mold. So we, we really have to be very, very careful about that. Um, Dr. Klinghart uh, has quoted a scientific paper saying that if you irradiate mold with microwaves, it increases the generation of mycotoxins by 800 times. So um, it's not so, it is, so if you're electrosensitive to microwaves anyway, the molds are also sensitive to microwaves and they will increase the mycotoxins, which are the things that we react to. And so it, it's a very, very common thing with electrosensitive to be, to be mold sensitive. So be very careful and don't just use kitchen foil um, to, to shield you in an emergency, yes, but not, not more than a day or two, or you're, you're gonna get mold problems. So if you're gonna shield a room, all six sides, that's the first layer um, to the outside. And it acts just like a mirror. So microwaves w w work like light waves, um, ordinary daylight, um, and reflect, reflect anything coming towards you in your room gets reflected away, which is, is very healthy. But obviously you're then inside all six sides and it's effectively like a biscuit tin. So anything inside, like acoustically, will echo like mad, but also um, from a microwave point of view, it will, it will reflect like mad and you get what's called multiple internal reflection or echoes basically. And when you get that, um, the physics of it is that they, um, uh, that they, some places they add up and sometimes they take away. So you get hot spots basically, and you get particular frequencies that resonate um, and, and amplify. And so that, you know, you can, a lot of people, I mean, one of the first surveys I ever did, um, there was um, um, a very, very caring mum and, 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 and a lad in his early twenties who um, through MS was in a wheelchair and um, she had, she called me in because she'd done windows, floors, doors. Um, um, so put a film on the windows, put paint on the doors, put uh, wallpaper and um, on all, and into, into his bedroom. And he, once he'd done it, he went inside and he couldn't stay in there even a few minutes. He had to go, had to go out again. And it was because of all these what's called standing waves, all these multiple internal reflections and, um, in there. And that's very, very common uh, with people say they feel very uncomfortable in these um, strongly, um, expensively and detailly um, um, uh, areas. Um, and so that to um, to make sure that you dampen down all the reflections, the next layer should be this. And if you look very, very closely, will it focus on it? I'm sure there are. You can see little black fibers in there and they're short, short cut um, carbon fibers, uh, a waste product of the aircraft industry which are a weak conductor of electricity. And the effect of that, the effect of that is that um, the microwaves aren't reflected, they're absorbed. But the absorbing isn't as effective as the reflection of the, of the aluminium, which really cuts everything out very, very effectively, but needs, uh, so, but, this this absorbs stuff and feels very very for, as an electrosensitive this is you can it's very very comfortable stuff to have so it's a, it's a two layer solution one is aluminium on top so on the outside and then this on the inside and that stops all this bouncing around and 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 the un, the uncomfortable feelings uh, in in a, in a shielded in a shielded room um it needs to be earthed of course and um, there are many problems that arise with um, with doing 
this um, these things. Um, so you can have if you just did all the walls around the wall, it can what's called create what's called an induction loop, and the all of this is conducting, and the wiring in the walls will induce currents at, at mains frequencies and also dirty electricity frequencies around the whole of your walls and that is not not a good idea so if you're just doing the walls make sure that you don't make a complete electrical loop what you do is you have ordinary wallpaper on, on, on one uh, over one section and then you you join in the other thing like that so you don't get a complete circle you don't get a induction ring but that goes away if you connect it to and also do the ceiling and floor. It's just the maths of it make, make the, the, the induction loop not work anymore. So um, connecting Earth to these things, you have um, it's a, um, you you connect using a copper strip. So you can buy a copper strip, we sell it on our website with which has got conducting glue on the back of it. You peel glue off and you just run the slip with the, the, this copper strip round. The gardeners will know it's something similar to stop snails getting into, into flower pots. Um, but you connect that um, along the skirting. If you if you um, have taken the skirtings off behind where the skirtings are gonna go, and then also up the wall. And the reason for having so much of that is that um, plaster cracks um, and breaks the over over long time because it's normally mounted on, on wooden boards and the wood shrinks uh, over time and it opens up cracks. And then when you've got your your all the hard work you've, you've done for making a continuously conductive sheets all all around your room to to block the radiation if the cracks break it up and stop it working but that's why you put long um long strips of copper on the thing and um the the uh, diagrams supplied with from y shield um that we supply um um will show you working working situations and um, also, you can also ring us and, and ask us how, how to do it in your, your specific situation. I, I did one flat in London, which had, an, had a timber frame in it. It was really, really old. And so you got blocks of plaster with wood in between. And that, that was incredibly difficult to do. But we, we, we got a reasonable result in the end. So the paint. The, y, the classically Y Shield, the market leader is Y Shield, but there are others on the market now, um, where, where which do quote very good statistics on. Um, but we we cover the Y Shield, and the reason for that is that they do they do different versions for different different situations. So if people are particularly um, chemically sensitive, uh, you can you can have a version with no chemicals in, um, but it's um, it behavior in terms of how much, how well it sticks and how long it lasts and all that stuff isn't so good. Um, so, but this it, the horses for courses. Okay, so I've got a question come up here from Phil Jedi, um, good name, um, and electrical stuff. So you're just connecting Earth um, and the American Earthing system. Hello, Susan. Right. <laughs> and um, so, uh, no, it, it shouldn't make any difference at all. I'm, I'm not an expert. I don't know the American electrical system terribly well, but the earthing should work just as well um, there in the in the American system, providing you know, there's always lots and lots of um, warnings about the faults uh, on particularly older American electrical wiring. Um, even uh, which seems to be worse than that. Um, I've, um, I've done several hundred surveys and I only ever once found the earth the earth not working, and in in the British system um, and in the British system the guidance at least locally here in Sussex has changed recently 
that it's okay to have add to add your own electrical earth um, rod. So it's a four foot rod, <clears throat> ever so cheap. You just can get an, elect an ordinary electrician to plug it to to put it in the garden and um, connect it to your own earths. Although I do have a customer at the moment who is particularly electrosensitive. And when we added that earthing rod, um, she experienced some extra problems. So there's some strange resonances going on in, in her particular situation, which was which was still, in, still investigating. But generally speaking, adding an earth rod is a very, very good idea. And I did that at another house that was being renovated recently. Um, which work very effectively. What I would say is in certain soils, particularly clay soils, um, dry clay soils don't conduct at all, but wet clay soils conduct really well. And so when you're driving one of these things in, after you've done it, um, when you're watering garden, when you're watering garden, um, people think you're mad, but you, you should also earth, uh, um, water your, your earth, earth rod um, to make sure that the good connection is, is maintained and you get a good, healthy, properly functioning electrical system. So where was I? I was talking about paint. So paint is great, um, particularly good for the fiddly bits. So cornicing and in between where your wall and your uh, where your wall and your ceiling come together. Very often there's some plaster shape which you can't really paper. So paint that. Um, woodwork, skirting, particularly um, skirting with form on it, um, better to paint than it is to wallpaper. Um, and doors and door frames and window frames, and window sills and all that kind of stuff, paint. Um, and that could be a right pain, particularly when you've got British small pane windows um, and painting all of that. And so you've got to make these the paint underneath good and nice and strong then you put two coats of your black paint on there and normally you'll want to bring it back to white which normally takes three coats so that's that's preparation making the base good and then five coats of paint and, and that take that's a lot of hours for a decorator but it needs to be done now um plastic window frames plastic window frames so the plastic itself is rather floppy and so what they do they strengthen the frame with aluminium uh, formed aluminium extruded aluminium um, strengtheners inside the plastic and very often that plastic that, that aluminium is big enough to block radiation coming in but sometimes it's not and you need to test it with a meter and if it's not unfortunately you've got to pace your 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 night your nice low maintenance plastic window frames with um, with black paint that you've then got to bring back to white, which another three coats of white. So that's a, a lot of a lot of a lot of work and careful choice of paint to make sure it doesn't peel. So that's the windows and window frames and doors and doors frames and walls catered for. So I. I, pr I prefer to use wallpaper than I do paint on, on flat walls because it's quicker and it's more reliable. When you're painting, this the paint is quite thick and you're not allowed to water it down. You need to follow the instructions very carefully and you need to mix and mix and mix and mix it. And in fact, why should supply a special mixer to put on your electric drill to, to really, really mix it incredibly well? And um, and if it's not mixed properly, and if this thick paint, you paint like this and it's streaky, the thin streak, the thin bits of the streakiness actually let the radiation through. So, you know, and so a good way to get around that is to paint one horizontally and the, the next coat vertically. And that helps to get around the problem. But it it's still you've got to be incredibly careful and rather skilled with with painting. To, to do that job properly. So um, that's that's the paint and that's it. So and um, choose the choose the type of paint carefully, mix it carefully, follow the instructions rigidly, um, and test the whole thing afterwards with your meter. 
Now, if you choose not to go the whole hog, and so you're not creating a kind of six-sided biscuit tin, and you're leaving out the roof or the floor or some of the walls, um, the radiation will flood in. And so that instead of, if, if, you, if you read the specifications of the shielding factor of the, um, of some of the things, some of them say a million to one, you know, and so yes, if you wrapped yourself in that stuff or in a box big enough to be out of the near field from this stuff, then you would get a million to one, but actually, practically, you never get there. Practically, the best you can hope for is about 10,000 to one, and that is really, really difficult. You need very few small holes to, to make that go right down to 10 to one. Um, and so um, it's um, actually the best, the best bet you've got of really getting it low, but below 10 to one or 100 to one is a canopy. Canopies are expensive. Um, and um, if you go for the silver option, they tend to discolor. Um, so watch out for that one. They can get to look very um, unsightly, like just rusty, um, very, very quickly in a, in a few months. And also there's the feeling of claustrophobia. You've got to climb in and out as you get into bed. You've got to climb through, through the nets um, and then seal it up afterwards. And also there is um, oxygen, um, you know, the the, the uh, through flow of, of air is, is really, really reduced. Um, and in, in warm, particularly in warm climbes, then that is, uh, is a problem. You need fans and that kind of thing to make sure that you still get a good through flow of air as you, when, when you're asleep. Now, the canopy, the top of it and the sides of it are all are all sealed, are all connected, and there's no gaps. But there's one area where when you close it after you've got in, you've got to make sure that there are very, very, there are no gaps there. There's a proper overlap and the sealers work properly. Then you've got, well, what do you do with all the radiation coming up? It's, it's not so bad if, you, if you're on the earth, um, but mainly, the the sleeping areas um, have another room below them. I many of them, if you're in a block of flats, a high high rise block of flats. But um, and normally in the most houses, you've got the bedrooms on the first floor, and therefore there's all the radiation from the room below comes straight up into it. So you have to stop that. So that means you put you put something on the floor, and it means that the edge of the canopy has to lie on it. And there hasn't got to be gaps between the thing on the floor. So you have to specify the, the, the sheet on the floor wider than the canopy. And then you need to earth yourself for health purposes. So you still need an earthed mattress topper to, um, to earth you while, while you're in this, in, this, um, in this Faraday cage of a canopy. And you need to earth the canopy, of course, as well. And you need you mustn't contact it. And ideally, you are uh, two wavelengths from the edge of it. So if you if if you, if you're um, sleeping on your own and you've got a double bed, you can do that. Um, and so and sleep in the middle. And that's that's your best bet of of, of getting the incident radiation right right down. So uh, yes, I haven't mentioned. Um, the glass on the window. So you can make a box around your window and you can put shielding lining in your curtains, but you mustn't let where the curtain rail is, you mustn't let the mustn't let the radiation out. So best to have a box like a helmet, which is made of wood that you paint, you paint with white shield wood, and that's well, rather than that, what you can also do is then paint the window frame paint paint the sill um, um you you earth the earth the mattress topper in the same way as I explained before with just a, a simple lead 
with a crocodile clip on the end and a yellow plug on the other end. So um, on the glass, so the final bit of getting the windows um, radiation proof is to have a film. So the film, so a lot of new newish cars have got the windows and the back blacked out. Um, and um, so that's made with a plastic called mylar. It's incredibly tough plastic. It's the same things that modern car headlights are made of instead of glass. They're made of this mylar plastic and you can you can throw bricks at it and then it just bounces off, you know. Um, and the only thing is it scratches more easily than glass does. So you get a very thin, um, very thin fraction of a millimeter thick film, um, which has got coatings on it. Um, and the coatings are deposited um, metal in this gaseous form um, on this thing, which um, then the whole, the, which are reflect, the act as a mirror reflect, um, the microwave uh, radiation. Um, similar, many modern windows um, have got similar coatings on them, particularly if they're double glazed, um, to reflect heat radiation. And if you look at the electromagnetic spectrum or kind of radio wave light spectrum, um, you've got light, light, the rainbow colors of the light here. Then below that, you've got infrared, which is heat radiation. And then just below that, you've got microwave radiation. So Sometimes the uh, coatings on the glass for the heat radiation extend downwards to microwaves and will reduce microwave, but better to get a, uh, a film which is specifically uh, designed for that. And it's, it's quite easy to put up, um, but the stuff isn't cheap. So know what you're doing, practice a bit before you mess up. But anyway, you, you spray water on both and you use a squeegee and drive the bubbles out that way and then cut it with a scalpel around the outside so not difficult to do but if you're a bit concerned get an, get an expert who's who's used to doing it and they're really effective and there's lots of different versions um and the ones that are darker or restrict um daylight radiation coming in they're usually a bit green uh, are cheaper um but you can get ones that hardly affect the daylight radiation suit, when all the paints are done, you can't tell that the, the, the shielding is there, but um, it will, um, which, which we won't be able to tell the shielding is there, but nevertheless will we'll reflect the microwaves out. Can you take the film off the window? Is the application permanent? Well, providing the glass below um, I'm in a Victorian flat, which has got very fragile glass in some windows. I, I wouldn't, I would think it would probably break the glass pulling the thing, but normally um, no problem at all. You just, you wet it again and, and it will come off. Right, so question about, about earth rods in the garden might pick up currents <clears throat> if you're in a very populated area. Yeah, <coughs> in certain circumstances, there are quite considerable currents that will flow um, through the soil. And that's particularly in areas like North London, where the return current from the from the railways actually goes through the soil, not through um, cabling. Um, it's certainly that's certainly true on old underground lines anyway, um, and that can produce horrendous currents in the clay soils in North London. So that's absolutely true. And you, you need you need to check that. But that's actually even more reason to have. The earth the earth at your house because if you if you rely on the utility the electricity company's earth that's earthed somewhere not far away but it could be the substation and that could be say 300 meters away and so the, the, there's a very big difference between the ground voltage at, a, at the substation from from your own and your pipes, if, if you've got old pipes, metal gas pipe, metal gas pipes, metal water pipes, obviously act as a locally locally as an earth, um, and you can have huge currents going through the water and gas pipes. But the first thing I always check when I'm doing a survey is to is to look at the currents in the um, 
water uh, water and gas pipes and on a couple of quite rare but a couple of occasions i've seen hor horrendously high ones and one was really nasty because it was the gas pipe supplied a water heater right by the kitchen sink and there was huge magnetic fields coming coming off that easily rectified by putting a bit of bit of plastic in the bit of plastic gas pipe in the metal gas pipe just a six inch section and that stops the problem but um uh, it was it was it was quite a shock to to find those very very high magnetic fields there so should i use earthing club on my on my laptop when it's working on battery but plugged into internet via a wired okay um so we come uh, we that's a uh, that is a very good question um so the my setup here on my computer is i've got my um currently bare feet because it's summer bare feet on a um on an earthing mat um and that earths my whole body and i've got um one of our uh, computer earthing cables plugged into the back of my computer and then into the earthing socket there so that my my mouse is is earthed my keyboard is earthed and i'm earthed so that when i put my hand on the keyboard or put my hand on the on the mouse there's no voltage difference or electrostatic voltage difference between me and the keyboard and the mouse and so there's no current between the two and the um the voltages normally are i don't know what the right word is but infected with dirty electricity frequencies and um and so without that voltage to drive that electric field i can't feel it my body isn't affected by it but if it were then i would be affected by the dirty electricity um from off the keyboard and off the mouse into into my body and because of all the different frequencies in dirty electricity some of the systems in my body would resonate and when they resonate their their, their function is is greatly impaired so it could be liver it could be brain it could be eye it could be whatever um but um uh that because of that simple thing of the of the earthing that stopped it now the um what you can get is the um the modem is driving your ethernet cables and the ethernet if if that isn't earth you what you can do is get one of our um uh earthing cables with a usb socket and you plug it into the back of the the back of the, the modem and that means that if you're using the right category of ethernet cable then the earthing is connected through and at the other end of the ethernet cable um whatever's there as well will will be earth too um so um yeah that's that's really that's a really important question yes you do need to keep earthed all the time when once you even if you're on power um more important when you when you are powered up and you're charging a battery on your laptop but um important again because you can get um induced voltages along the ethernet cable um, and so some take I'll, I'll deal with the different categories of um, Ethernet cable and the, the, the standard default one is with something called category five, which doesn't have earthing in it. But five E, guess what the E stands for earthing yes, um, and so that um, the, the category five E, which is the next cable uh, quality up from five does does cater for earthing. But I need to deal with how the detail of, of the connection, whether how and why six day is better, and also something called power over Ethernet or PoE, um, which um, may or may not be useful to you. Anyway, um, so we've got some more questions down here. We, we're running out of time. Where can we buy a hooded top that there isn't one on your website? Um, I will talk to Victoria, um, who runs the website, to make sure that we've we've got some. Um, 
I turn off my electricity at night. How does this affect any of your advice? Well, it's a jolly good thing to do. And Dr. Klinghart these days won't treat anyone who's not sorted their electricity out. And the first thing he says is, turn your power off at night. So, yeah, it's a good thing to do. Um, and it doesn't affect any of my advice, advice that I can think of. Um, it's just a jolly good, th jolly good thing to do and very calming and restful. And that. the only thing I would say is that if it does induce symptoms, there's something called the Herxheim effect or Herx, H-E-R-X, um, which means that if you take a poison or a drug away um, from your body, um, a bit like um, alcoholics with cold turkey and, you know, it can cause severe symptoms just by taking the poison away. So watch out for that one. Um, and if, if you get it, do it slowly, just do it for an hour or two at, at a time and get longer and longer when, when you do it. But it, it is a powerful um, poison. And uh, so beware what you're doing is, is a strong thing and, and it can really affect you. And we're, apparently our website doesn't, doesn't affect, accept credit cards. So um, this is Patricia. Um, I would suggest take that up with Victoria. Um, her numbers on the on the website. She can she can help you with that. I have a hooded I have a hooded head covering. Do you sell these? Yes, we do, um, and they're good and they work. So we're we're running out of time. Um, I hope you hope you found it useful. Um, certainly, I found your your questions um, suitably challenging, as they <laughs> as they always are. Um, and um, I hope just a real point is there that there's a lot of criticism of shielding and there are many, many ways in where, as I began to point out, that it could go, go wrong. So um, don't give up if you try it and, it, and it, you don't feel it works. There are ways of making it work properly that, that I've, certainly I I've, I've benefit. In fact, we could argue that it saved my life, but anyway, maybe I was exaggerating a bit, but certainly um, I got rid of very, very debilitating yeah. uh, symptoms. Yes, yeah, so, so what should we do next? Um, I think that I got lots of people asking about computer use, um, and I think a session on, on computer use, and I can pick up also on the different kinds of e Ethernet cabling that there are, the different so-called categories or abbreviation is CAT. So when you when you buy Ethernet cables, the last the, it'll select which, which CAT you want, and it's the quality or the, the specification of the cables. And the higher the number starts at five and goes up to eight, and the higher the number, the more expensive and the better quality, and um, the less the less it leaks signal, and so the the, the better it is for us. And, it, and it, uh, something I'd also like to cover is is um, is um, another session on dirty electricity and um, and uh, how we're getting on with our with our filtration, the different kinds of filters that you can use for different circumstances, because dirty electricity is such an important thing. Okay, well, anyway, thank you all for attending. Um, I hope to see lots of you next week and, and do, invite, do invite your friends, um, particularly if they're electrosensitive or want to help you with your electrosensitivity. Uh, it always helps to these, it's such a big subject and there's so much, so much to explain and also it's still so much prejudice uh, against um, electrosensitivity. Um, but anyway, so um, it, it ties finished. So um, thank you all very much. I hope you hope you found it. I hope you found it useful. Um, and so, all right. Okay. See you all next week. Bye now. <laughs>